but the assumption is that you all already know how to do all these things here. So I will do number, uh, I will do number J, and then when I come and do this, this one, and then this one is a classwork, and then the two are going to be your homework. So what we want to look at here, I think we've already done this yesterday. We've already calculated, we've already drawn the graph. So what we want to look at here is what we call a line of symmetry. Now, line of symmetry, we saw it when we were busy with the parabolic function. It was symmetrical by the x value of the turning point, if you remember correctly. Again. Now, we spoke about symmetry. What did, what, what did you say was this symmetry? It, it divides into equal parts. Again. Yeah, so we are going to check with you. Can we make our graph to be symmetrical? Now, a hyperbolic function is symmetrical about two lines. One of them has a positive gradient. One of them has a negative gradient. So if we look at this, I think this one here is a parabolic function here. Remember, you have two parabolic functions. Now, if I were to cut this thing here, put a line here, passing through the point of contact between these two things, between our asymptotes. If I fold this thing here, look at these two things. I think they are equal, you can see them. Yeah, so this thing here, it's symmetrical. So this is going to be a line of symmetry. And then this line of symmetry here, it has an equation. Because it's a straight line, it has an equation that says which y is equal to mx plus c. But not only is it symmetrical about that line, it's also symmetrical about this line here. If I don't want to cut it that way, I can cut it this way. So it's also symmetrical about this one. So we have two axes of symmetry. We have one with a positive gradient. We have one with the white with them with the negative gradient. And then here's the good news. The good news is that we know what is the gradient of this line. The gradient of this line here, it can either be positive one or it can be negative one. So the gradient we, we know. What we don't know is the value of C. We don't know what is the value of C, but we can get it. Now, how do we get the value of C? There are many ways in which you can get the value of C. One way, if you are given the equation, I usually say to learners, if you are given the equation, the simplest way to do these things is to write it as y is equal to minus all over x minus one minus two. Again. Now, if you want to get the equation of the axis of symmetry with the positive gradient, you are going to take this thing here. Just take this part here. And then this is going to give you the equation of the axis of symmetry. So when you're going to have y, which is going to be equal to x minus one minus two. And then if you say minus one minus two, it's going to say x minus minus is going to give you minus three. Again. Then this is the equation of the axis of symmetry. With a positive gradient. And then let's say you want to get the one with the negative gradient. How do you get the one with the negative gradient? You still do exactly the same thing. Now I'm going to take this. I think I'm doing this one. <laughs> I'm going to take this thing here. Except which on the denominator, I'm going to come and put negative outside. So if we take the one with the negative, this is how we're going to have it. We're going to have y, which is going to be. I think I take everything and then I just put a negative outside. Then it says I'm going to have open bracket x minus one, oh, close bracket minus two. And then now I'm going to multiply with this negative. Negative multiplied by positive minus x. Again, negative and negative. It gives us what? Plus one minus two. Now, if you do this and then you are going to have one minus two, okay? What is going to be one minus two? Minus x minus one. And then this is going to be. X of symmetry with the positive gradient, <laughs> X of symmetry with the one with the, with the negative gradient. Now we should be able to come and plot these things. So we have X minus three, and then here we have Y, which is going to be minus X minus one. Now, clearly this is a, this, this are straight lines. Okay? If you have straight line, you just have to know which one is going to be the X intercept, what is going to be the Y intercept. So for this one, it says it's going to pass through X minus three. As you can see, it should pass through at minus three. I think if I make this to be zero, remember, if I make this to be zero, what am I going to have? I'm going to have y is equal to y two minus three. And it's also going to pass through at three here. And it's also going to pass through this point. Then after that, I am going to have something that looks like this. So I have something that looks like this. So this, this one is the one with the positive gradient. Okay? Now let's check the one with the negative gradient. How is the one with the negative gradient going to look like? So you can make this to be zero. If you make this to be zero, it says which y is going to be equal to a two minus one. So it should pass through it minus one. So we'll come and put that. Okay, this thing here should pass through it minus one. Not only should it pass through it minus one, then if I make this one to be zero, you're going to have zero, which is one. It's going to be minus x minus one. Okay? You take this one to this other side, it says which we have one, which is going to be minus x. Okay? And then it says which x is going to be equal to a two minus one. So it's also going to pass through here. 
And then after that, you can connect one, two, three dots. Those are important dots. Yeah, if it's drawn to scale, then it's supposed to. Yeah, then these are the two axes of symmetry that you can have. Now, chances are, for examination, they will ask you about one. They will tell you, which is, give us an axis of symmetry with a positive gradient. Give us an axis of symmetry with a negative gradient. So what are we doing now? Come and do the following one. You are going to do number, uh, yeah, you're going to do number G. You're going to do number I as a task right now. Okay? You are doing the edge, you're determining the edges of symmetry and then you represent it graphically. 